Hey, cookie. Given the meowing, it's a cat key frog. <laughs> cat frog. The new hit so show wait, from Nickelodeon. <laughs> so, okay, so you're out of the, um, you're out of the cutscene then? Yeah, now I'm into the bi the battle itself, so... Okay. Hey, Silver, I actually just remembered something. Yeah? I'm just curious, you know, you say I wail, and I'm a whale when it comes to Mega Man X Dive, but out of curiosity, how much have you spent on Fate? <laughs> um... <laughs> Actually, uh, my... Well, either way, imagine if instead of waifus, you would use that money to give a cat or two from your local animal. <laughs> God local damn it. Like, June is a top of cat month, and don't worry, I know you already have Simba. But fortunately for you, most of not all animal shelters have meet and greets where people bring their pets in to get to know animals. <laughs> it's just a no shelter animal. You're not even keeping a straight well, face anymore. Don't let a life forever be a shelter kid. Don't let the yes, fucking <laughs> you saying that got me laughing. <laughs> don't let a life forever in a shelter be a cat's fate. And much like the units in your waifu game, don't overlook elderly and crippled cats who are deserving of your gems. I mean, love too. And don't forget, if you can't adopt, you can always spread the word and help give our f furry feline friends a family. God damn it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, phew. Okay, so I just need to survive a few turns, yeah. Uh, let's see. And yes, that's why I, that's why Koki is in here because I'm like, hey, I'm gonna do an ad. You want to hear it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Henry, look at Forrest. Forrest actually adopted. Honestly, this I have to admit, I have to admit, um, this was actually a good opportunity to mention Simba. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the chat. Yeah. That's why I was saying, because I thought you were I... just yelling at the Lance. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no. So no, Lance, is, Lance is behaving. I just like you're gonna run out of different of different ways to give that pitch eventually. You will run I out mean, of I haven't, Well I haven't I haven't just been giving those pitches, I've been talking about mental health. And by the way, spending lots on mobile games, that's gaming addiction. And let me tell you something, that is a mental health problem that we have already <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's make mental health. A double <laughs> whammy? Really? Spend it on a, don't spend money on gems, spend it on a therapist. It'll do you more good than a moving JPEG ever could. <laughs> I, I just came up with that at the top of my head, but I was just trying to mention, like, animal shelter, like, adopting cats hasn't been the only thing that I've pitched. I did do that one, like, mental health pitch, yeah. Well, technically I've done three, so, but yeah, it's, the, the month is, it's not even halfway through the month yet. Plus, I haven't been into all, in all, in all the streams yet, because I've either been at work or I've just been busy, but yeah. Yeah. You know what every I mean. stream I've been, I every stream every I've been stream. in a call for. I mean, every time you throw comments, and you will run yeah. out of creativity eventually. Well, we'll see. I mean, I kind of incorpor I incorporate the game. Well, I mean, I do incorporate whatever Silver's playing or doing into it. So, I mean, there is that. <laughs> True. I can only imagine the animal shelter speech that you'll make for Final Fantasy V. I already have something in mind for that. Oh no. I I knew it. I fucking knew that you would have written something. Actually, funny enough. Okay, I mean, okay, I mean, hold on, hold on. Now, the first... Hold on, question. In that case, if it's already prepared, is it still a jinx? If it's already prepared, is it still. Oh, because. Oh, because he's saying, oh, I'm gonna have. To... Okay. Well, I mean, well, here's the jinx. Do I have just one prepared, or do I have many? Ah. There you go. <laughs> and therein lies the game. See, the whole, uh, the whole reason why I was, why I prepared those first is because this whole thing started around the time you were talking about the five job fiesta. Oh so shoot, you're right. I was first and foremost. Yeah, that's why I was thinking of those like almost first and foremost. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so there's a pretty nasty catch to this fight, apparently. Uh, each turn that's gone by, uh, she's taken away one of my command spells. 
So. Okay, so okay. For the rest of my break, you want to do the um, stuff on pocket camp? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. What? Alrighty, so. Just stuff that Toki and I were doing before uh, before I started working, and we're gonna finish it up right now. All right. Okay. Anyway, have fun, have fun with the rest of the stream. All right, take it easy. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. see. Treasure hunt C. Man. He's gonna run out of creativity eventually. Uh. You underestimate him at your own peril. Is that my own peril? Okay. That's all my command spells gone. Oh boy. And the event has just begun. Wait, what? I said, and the event has just begun. Okay, so both my Tristan and the support Tristan are down. And I've also lost Tesla. Uh. Let's see. Class affinity change when attacking. Attack affinity to be same as Berserker! Oh god! I missed that! Okay. Uh Moon Goddess is pressure. Uh Stout Arm of Brutality. Oh Tri Star Archer. Alright, what's that other effect that she's got? Restore HP for yourself during normal attacks. Remove one buff of a single enemy, and when successfully removed, decrease the defense of a single enemy. Ooh. That actually sounds pretty nasty. Uh, let's hit her with... Sabotage. Alright. Uh... Let's see about getting Robin to full MP. Ah, oh, crap. Okay. Let's see if this does anything. Uh, Caribbean Freebird, U Bow, and. Orion? Smash. <laughs> that is not Freebird. <laughs> but I have my own fun. My own way. If I want to butcher free, but I shall butcher it. Ooh, ah. Okay. And Robin Hood's down. Hard down. I at least survived the fight, right? Uh, nope. The fight's still going. Okay. Uh, shoot. Do I have to, like, freaking break down one of her health bars? Is that it?
Because if that's the case, I might have to give up a Saints Quartz. Uh, Ryan's down. Yeah, gonna have to give up a Saint's Quartz. Uh, let's see. I really do not like how much attack power she has stored up now. And the fact that they're all unremovable. Where is he? Uh, Leyline Stone. I still have a few of those. Star Archer. Uh, code U. Uh, hmm. of Healing. Let's go Artemis Agnos, 80% buster crit, 100% buster crit. I do not like that crunch sound. <laughs> Uh, so there's a chance that the animation for um, Artemis Agnos is a little different, and the alternate animation is Orion panicking uh, as he gravitates towards Artemis. She puts him in a headlock and she basically strangles him. And then he's just like, oh, wait, was that a dream? Uh, such is the burden of a goddess's love, things like that. Because, you know, it's Artemis. She's a lunatic. I you know the face I'm making. You know the face. Remind me that one I me and I finally meet in person. <laughs> when I right. when I try, you will just catch my hand and prevent me from reaching up there. I I can't do that. <laughs> All right, cutscene time. No, not yet. I can't give up yet.
Stay with me, Silver Shinobi. Oh no, he's seriously drained. I don't know how she's doing it, but that Tom Lin is somehow eating his command spells. Hmm. I've never felt feedback quite like this before. It's still completely pathetic, but there's something more to it. Hmm? You there. That look. It's not fear or despair. Is that... Hatred? It's pleasure. Good. You figured out that much, at least. It's been a while, hasn't it? I could have gone my entire life without seeing you again and been happy. Oh well. You know her, Artoria? <laughs> I don't know you. I don't remember ever seeing a pipsqueak like you before. Are you some weed I stepped on or something? Either way, don't talk to me again until you've grown more. It's a literal pain in the neck looking down to talk to you. Not that a runt like you is likely to do much growing. Why you? But enough talk. You intruders will get no mercy from me. I have no more time to waste on you. Die now, humans and servants alike. Huh? A bowstring? Indeed. A bewitched, unbreakable bowstring. I can wield however I wish, to be specific. You'll never be able to get past it, no matter how strong you are. So it would seem. Is this one of the Wing Clan's threads? I'm surprised there were still any left. But so what? You don't actually think you can defeat me with this, do you? Defeat you? No. Detain you? Yes. Da Vinci, Artoria, takes over Shinobi and get him out of this town. I'll hold Gawain here and ensure she doesn't come after you. You got it. Honestly, it's not going to be easy, but I'll make sure he gets out of here no matter what. Come on, Silver Shinobi. I'll carry you in my mechanical arms. Stand up, Artoria. I'd carry you too if I could, but I'm afraid I just can't. Huh? But what about you, Tristan? Don't worry about me. It would seem this is where I die. Huh? You're... You're not serious, right? You can't just throw your life away like that. Besides, you're too injured to... It's all right. Besides, this isn't the first time I've faced down Sir Gawain like this. Besides, I've already thought of a trump card I can use against her. If it all works out, I should be able to catch up to you soon enough. That said, I'm afraid I can't use it with oh. all of you here. Go, my king. Please hurry. You are still at the beginning of your journey. Okay, I'm ready. Come on, follow me. If you can't keep up, I'm going to leave you behind. You get that, right? Let me guess. You've decided to sacrifice yourself to let your companions escape. Oh, come now. That should have gone without saying. You really are, Sir Gawain. Your body is strong and hard as a rock. But then, so is your head. Tell me something. Are all servants like you? Pawns who are willing to throw their lives away for their master because they neither fear death nor know what it is to truly live? I don't know that I'd put it that way. Even servants hope to avoid death. In fact, I'd say we fear death even more than we did when we were alive. For we heroic spirits know all too well how miraculous it is to be summoned. We know that this opportunity will never come again. We know how rare it is to be granted dreams, even after death. Most of all, we know what dying feels like. We know how painful, how bitter, how sad it can be. You may think that we can bear it because we've experienced it before, but you would be wrong. Death is something living things can only bear once. To suffer the pain of my own death over and over or to make others grieve my passing several times is simply more than I can take. If I may confide, I'm hoping you'll let me escape with my life. Whether you live or die here is entirely up to you. The only one I mean to kill is your master. If you're willing to stand down, I'm willing to let you go. 
It would be a shame to waste this impressive technique of yours. Even if your master were dead, you could still have a good life here in Fairy Britain. <sighs> no, Tomlin Gawain, I could not. That is why I am going to stop you. It is the least I can do to repay the debt I owe to the one who trusted in my knighthood, even when I was fighting against him in a moment of weakness. I know nothing of your life or circumstances, and I confess I don't care a whit about your idea of justice. My only interest is in using this life of mine for the one I love, no matter what it takes. You tied my whole body up with string? When did you do that? But so what? If you think a mere human can hold me down, you're... <clears throat> what is this? How is this even possible? How did you put these strings all over town without any magical energy? I never even saw you move your hands. Indeed. These restraints rely on weight, not strength. The mass of this very town, this culmination of human technology, is what holds you in place. Thanks to our earlier battle, I now know very well how strong you are, and I know you cannot break these restraints with brute force alone. I may no longer have the fingers on my right hand, but I still have my mouth. Oh, that's a look. Now, otherworldly knight, Prepare to face the full force of my airstrike. What? You say it's lowly human technology that holds me in place? That does it. You deserve to die a miserable death after all, servant. I'm going to dash any hopes you had of this pathetic trick working. Jesus! Are you hurt, Lady Gawain? And what are we going to do about the ranch? Don't worry about it. I'll take full responsibility when reporting to Her Majesty. Now, gather all our fastest runners and go after that human and servants who managed to escape. You should be able to catch up to them much quicker than me right now. I'll join afterward. Don't worry. I'm not just saying it like that idiot knight did a minute ago. Once you catch up, surround and restrain them. But don't kill them until I get there. Yes, Lady Gawain. Consider it done. <sighs> that hurt more than I expected. My whole body is still a little numb. I should have asked the man's name. He deserved that much before I killed him. Hold on. What was that Winnie? What? What was that sound? Sorry, I'll explain later. Right now we need to get away from the fairies chasing us. Can you stand? Can you run? Okay, I'm gonna put you down then. Now run for it! Ugh. How can Earth Clan fairies be so fast? They're almost on us, Da Vinci. Damn it! And after Tristan managed to buy us some time. But what can we do? There's nowhere to hide out! Huh? What's that sound? Oh, good! I made it! I heard you guys were in trouble, so I figured, hey, Fairy King Oberon to the rescue. You guys know what carriages are, right? Great, then get in. I'll catch you all up later. 
Huh? A carriage? As in a carriage carriage? The kind only clan heads are allowed to use? That's right. Tools that exploit animals are prohibited by British law. But there are some fairies out there who voluntarily provide such labor themselves. My name's Redra Bit, the Fey Horse. I'm a Fang Clan fairy who's always been fascinated with carriage culture. I usually serve Lady Aurora, but just this once I agreed to serve Lord Oberon as well. <laughs> Something tells me this is fate at work, so why not sit back and see how great a carriage ride can be? So it's a carrot. Wait, red? Rabbit? There's a whole lot I'd like to comment on here, but for now I'll just say great timing, Oberon. Come on, guys, get on. Those soldiers will never catch us now. Clever of them. Do you know who that carriage belongs to? No, my lady. One of our soldiers used to build carriages, but he said he didn't recognize the design. He thinks one of the clans must have made it without the High Queen's permission. I'm so sorry we couldn't be of more help. No matter. Call the soldiers back. We're returning to Camelot. Are you sure, my lady? I don't have time to go around chasing after rats. No. Scratch that. They're not even rats. Britain is the High Queen's garden and no garden is entirely free of pests. I just let my temper get the better of me this time. Next time we meet, I'll grind them beneath my boot. Assuming I ever do meet them again, of course. We have someone much better at squashing bugs, in any case. Oh, you mean Fair Lancelot, the strongest Tamlin in all of Britain? She'll crush those bugs in no time, no matter where they try to hide. Are you talking about Lady Lancelot in front of Lady Gawain, you idiot? Have you got a death wish? Forgive me, Lady Gawain. I meant no disrespect. You are, of course, the strongest of the Tomlin. It's all right. You're correct. She is the strongest. But watch your tongue next time. She's not the strongest of the Tomlin. She's the strongest creature in all of Fairy Britain. She isn't even in the same category as us. Do remember that. Yes, my lady. I'll never forget it again. Good. Now bring the captured humans here so I can deal with them before we leave. <laughs> Please, wait. You've got it all wrong. This wasn't our fault. Those soldiers opened our doors without asking. I told them we didn't want to go. Please, don't kill me. I'll never hope for freedom again. I still have ten years left. Doesn't that make me a valuable slave? Please, just spare my... Ah! Oh! Know your place, dog. Any human who so much as oh, thinks about running away oh, I is worth it. left stream. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Any human who so much as thinks about running away is worthless, even as a slave. This new form suits you much better. By the time I'm done breaking you in, maybe you'll be ready to rejoin your fellow human slaves. Oh, jeez, that's horrifying. So those black dog things we saw her using earlier? Uh, she just turned that guy into one of them. He has become a good boy. Um, in this context, I don't think that's what we should call him. It's more like an attack dog. Oh my god. It's letting me say I, it's letting me say I've been subbed again. Double message! <laughs> huh. Well... On the plus side... <laughs> Drake's, a, Drake's a sub confirmed. Let's go. Is what Carrie says. Carrie! 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 Ah! Who laughed? I used the Discord soundboard. You shoved my foot up your ass. 
Let's see. Do 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 do. Okay. Um. I do not appreciate being called out. Oh, but you call out me out all the time. All right, let's see. Uh, all right. All right, so, uh, fragment two. Hmm? What? It has hit you. God damn it. Check. Check your username. What? Oh, that? Yeah. It, it's all... Yeah, it has, it has finally hit you. Yeah. I, I, I caved. I... It gave me the option to either do it now or hold out until, like, the deadline. And I was just like, yeah, no. Yeah, I'll do it now. I'm waiting for it to message me. I might not sleep tonight. Uh, it'll probably do it if you, like, restart Discord or something. I like my name. I'm waiting for the message. Because it recently hit someone who, uh, who made their account the same year I did, so it's working its way up to me now. Yeah. All right. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, fragment two. Let's go. This one's just one big cutscene, so. I'm fine with staying up tonight, though. <sighs> Cart's even heavier than usual. Come on, let's just get rid of that weapon already. No buyer's gonna want something that's scary looking. Don't be ridiculous, bro. You're gonna make Anise tear up again. Well, Don't you remember how grateful she was when she agreed to bring that weapon along too? I definitely remember how happy you were when she took your hand. What'd she say that was called back where she comes from again? A handshake? Speaking of hands. <laughs> They've got everything under the sun in Norwich, and I... It's called something new that I should not be allowed in this game. <laughs> God damn it. Well, they don't actually show it, so I we're fine. Made, I have finally... I have finally made the pun. I caved. All right. I'll be right back. My tummy is making the rumblies that only hands can satisfy. <laughs> Carl! Anyway. <laughs> anyway, they've got everything under the sun in Norwich, and I know they love their... Anyway, they've got everything under the sun in Norwich, and I know they love their trends in Gloucester, but I've never heard of any custom like that before. Uh, if you're feeling tired, Rob, would you like me to take over? I can still pull a card even without my memories. No, no need. I can manage fine on my own. You just keep resting up, Anise. We're almost to Gloucester, and I want everything to look its best. An amnesiac girl and three stingy fairy peddlers named Rob, Wag, and Winky. Together, these strange bedfellows made their way further and further north from the nameless woods. The peddlers thought to sell the girl to a ranch along the way, but Rob, who hated Woodwoes, the head of the Fang Clan, would have none of it. He insisted that anyone so violent didn't deserve a beauty like Anise. And that was the end of that. Way to go, big bro! Why do I feel like they're gonna have the whole Jojo Oingo Boingo uh, kind of air to them? Oh, wow! I can see a city off in the distance now! What's it like there, Winky? Okay, hold on. Got a screen cap that. Happy eggplant. Really, babe? Happy eggplant. 
Let me see the happy eggplant. I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, DM it to you. I saw it. You saw the happy eggplant? I see it. Yeah, I got back on the stream page in time. All right. That's Gloucester, Anise. Pretty impressive, right? Special place even for Britain. It's an upper-class city run by the head of the Wing Clan, Murian the Adored. It's all about trends, brands, and joy. You can get anything you want there as long as you can pay for it. Lovers, slaves, fairies, humans, everything. Not that it's really my kind of place. All the fairies who settle down there are posers and trend followers. Most of the stuff there is just gold-plated hunks of dirt anyway. It's all shine, no substance. Really? <clears throat> but I thought you were really proud of your Gloucester knife. That's exactly because it's a fake. A real knife that nice? <laughs> I'd be too afraid of breaking it to actually use it. Ah, oh, now I see. That does sound just like you, Winky. You don't like Gloucester, Winky? Then why'd you pick this route? I'm scared of the Norwich Calamity, too, but we still could have gone there instead. What are you, stupid? We can't use any eastern routes this time of year. The rainy season just ended. So the Drakai's territory will be at its biggest right now. Hell, I hear they still haven't fixed the Norwich Bridge yet. So Gloucester's our only choice. Though believe me, I am not happy about having to bow and scrape to that show-off Murian. <laughs> You two really like this Murian person, don't you? Where'd you get that from? I just said I hated her, right? But you looked so kind when you were talking about her. I'm almost a little jealous. <coughs> <laughs> Check it out, bro. Winky's so flustered he's coughing. Why so embarrassed, Winky? You ashamed of the truth or something? Oh, shut up. It's not like that. <clears throat> Anyway, did you guys hear about the big kerfuffle in Camelot? They say an assassin snuck in about ten days ago to try and kill High Queen Morgan. Yeah, I did. I heard they fought through a ton of... Hmm? <coughs> Y'all right there? Sorry. Yeah, I did. I heard... I got you a bit too fast. Ah. I heard they fought through a ton of soldiers all alone and made it all the way to the throne room. From what I heard, not even Lady Gawain or Lady Tristan could stop them. But then Lady Lancelot flew in, beat the shit out of them, right? Apparently, they had a badass mid-air battle, but ultimately the assassin got dropped in the pit. Whoa! Lady Lancelot really is something else, isn't she? Gawain, Tristan, Lancelot... Hmm? What's up, Anise? You getting motion sick or something? Hey, Rob, take it easy. The ride's too rocky for her. No, it's not that. I just have a little headache. When I heard those names, my chest got a little tight. Um, can I ask what kind of people these fairies are? Oh, right. She might have known some of the Tom Lin herself. Probably better if we don't say anything here, then. You mean you don't know Anise? Those are the great Tom Lin, the Knights of the Round Table. There's Gawain, the most feared Tom Lin in all of Britain. Tristan, the most hated Tom Lin in all of Britain. And Lancelot, the most beautiful Tom Lin in all of Britain. We couldn't do business without those three taking care of the Moors for us. Well, not that Tristan ever does much to keep us safe. <laughs> Hell, I'm more scared of her than I am of the Moors. That's why I never go to New Darlington if I could help it. Wag, the younger brother, smiled innocently. All while Rob and Winky were afraid that he might jog Anise's memories. Then all of a sudden... Rrr. Ah! Black dogs! This is all your fault, Wag, you idiot! These things wouldn't be here if you hadn't talked about Tristan! Just leave the cart and run for it before they eat us alive! You too, Anise. Get away from them. I'll hold them off as long as I... Ah! I don't know why you're attacking us, but I'm not going to let you hurt anyone. You want to pick on somebody? Pick on me. 
All right then. Oh dang, she's just tearing through them. Thank goodness. My body just moved on its own, but it looks like everything worked out. Is everyone all right? The girl stuck her shield in the ground with a resounding thud and turned to face the fairies. She was greeted with stunned stares from all three. And who could blame them? They had never seen such a graceful night before. That... that was amazing! I can't believe you sent all those black dogs packing by yourself! Black dogs are some of the most despised creatures in all of Fairy Britain, drawn to the putrid smell of death and decay. They are of the Unseelie court, evil fairies unaffiliated with any of the six clans. They come and go at a moment's notice, and the only species of fairy in Britain who feeds on their own kind. Wait, <coughs> hang on. How could she be this strong? Maybe she's the child of prophecy? Huh? Come on, Rob, there's no way that... How else do you explain it? She's got iron shield, iron armor, and you saw for us yourself how strong she is. She's gotta be at least as strong as Tom Lynn. If this ain't special, then nothing is. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be the child of prophecy, Anise. You just saved our lives and everything. Uh-huh, the child of prophecy? Me? Don't worry, I'll tell you all about it. Child of Prophecy is going to defeat the Queen and save all of Britain. She's the savior we've all been waiting for for a long, long time. She's going to save all the fairies. Rob, the greedy older brother, Wag, the innocent younger brother, began excitedly telling the girl about the Mirror Clan's prophecy. One did so with calculated intention, the other because he truly believed it. But when the amnesiac girl saw them so happy, she thought whatever they were talking about must be a good thing. Aww. And inadvertently began to believe it herself. Uh, idiots, you're gonna regret this. Even lies have a way of coming true. If the rest of the world starts to believe Anise is the child of prophecy, that's it. We're done for. It'll only be a matter of time until someone even greedier than us takes her away. All right. Uh, next up is Gloucester. We have a big question mark here. Hmm. Let's see, I think I'll go with the mobsters. <clears throat> uh, let's send Gawain out. I see. So Tristan stayed behind. He was a great knight, 
I don't know much about fighting, but even I could see that. So if that's what he chose, it must have been right. If only I was more capable. Maybe he'd still... What do you want to do, Silver Shinobi? Do you want to go back to the ranch? There's probably not anything left of him by now, but you could at least mourn him. The whole ranch is in ruins now, and the Tom Lin's already left. It should be safe to go back if you want. <coughs> no. There'll be time to mourn after we find Mash. I agree. Tristan didn't sacrifice himself so we could go backward. He did what he did to give us a chance to move forward. We always report back to him after we found Mash. I see. Uh, forget I said anything then. Anyway, I really showed up just in the nick of time, didn't I? That's one of the many benefits of my royal charm. I get to ride in on a white horse to save the day. Now I'm really glad I pleaded with Aurora to let me borrow this carriage. The only issue is... <laughs> is there some sort of problem with the color of my coat? Well, I guess it kind of looks white-ish in the right light. If you squint. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Thanks for cheering us up. So you're feeling better now? Great. Then here's another piece of good news. The city of Gloucester up north is about a day's journey from here. They hold auctions for rare and valuable goods every day there. And word has it that one of their hottest new items is a fairy with an unusual iron weapon. Apparently, some peddlers found them near the Nameless Woods. And they plan on putting them up for auction as soon as tomorrow. A fairy with an iron weapon near the Nameless Woods? That's got to be M.A.S.H. I'm sure of it. Meh. Then we got to get to Gloucester right away. I rushed back to Salisbury as soon as I found out. But when I heard you'd already left, I got a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. So I asked Aurora for a favor on the condition I'd owe her one in return and got to the ranch as fast as the carriage would carry me. I see, so that's how you managed to get something so valuable. That was some very quick thinking. Thanks. Well, I'd prefer to rest up in the autumn forest if we could. Time is money and all that. I assume it's so long to Salisbury and off to Gloucester? To Gloucester. Excuse me, could I say something first? What is it, horsey? We were just having a moment here, you know. I know, but I am a proud fay horse. The most rambunctious and chivalrous stallion in all of Britain. So, as a matter of principle, I can only entrust my back to those I have recognized as my master. I was willing to come this far on Lady Aurora's orders, but if you insist on going to Gloucester, well... I trust you see what I'm getting at? Carrots? A battle! Wait, what? Maybe I should have gone with the Shinobi Inquisition. Alright. Little gift for Orion. Moon Goddess is pressure. Let's see, uh... 
Actually, wait, shit, I'm an idiot. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, I can't do anything for uh, Orion right now, so... Alright, Belt of Bertalak. Uh, Stout Arm of Brutality. Let's see. First shine. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, And a boom. I don't know if you heard that, but that was some amazing English. I did not. Ah. Hey, it, oh, oh the, the furry prince was about to join us, but he did not. He chose not to. Oh! Okay! He brought reinforcements. Oof, okay. Right. Uh, decrease defense for all enemies. Actually, uh, let's see, Red Ram Mitt, Fay Horse Red Rabbit, Red Raget. I feel like there's a joke or a reference here, but I'm not getting it. Let's see. <clears throat> what were their names again? Uh, Red Rabbit. That one was obvious because it's red hair. And his reinforcements are Red Rabbit and Red Raget. Yeah, I don't get those ones. It might just be they were going along with a bit. Okay. God damn it. Orion is like so close to getting his meter to fall. Screw it. Oh. 
Uh. Okay, you know what? How about... I at least trim the cannons. Or tried to. Yeah, just short. And going's down. Okay, great. All right, uh, gentlemanly love. Thank you, teach. All right, uh, screw it. Orion Brave Chain, starting with Artemis Agnos. Uh, let's see, what is that for one turn? Yes, it's for one turn. I suppose I should at least... Okay, that one's down. Oh, right, I gave Orion uh, Ignore Invincible. And now he's dead. Okay. I got this wee baby in the arms. <sighs> Say hi, Lance. Hey, Lance. Are you a baby, Lance? Is that why you get picked up by Mama so much? <laughs> All right, screw it. Voyager of the Storm. He is a little furry baby. Alright, uh... Queen Anne's Revenge, System Keranos, and a 100% chance to crit from Blackbeard. Carrie's will just trigger. Carrie's will just trigger the JoJo yes alert. <laughs> Perfect timing. Ah, uh, well, at least it's stunned, so I could just finish him off. Uh, hey, hey, Lance, no biting. Mother. 
I'm glad you haven't tried pulling that on me yet. Really? Just try? Fifth Zenith. The, the, the fancy typing of the wild dragon. Medieval typing. See, dra we, dragons, like, we dragons used to collect gold because it was clinky and made nice sounds. Not because it was shiny, but because it had value. Simply because it was pretty and it made nice. Because it was uh, clinky. <laughs> it made the sounds we enjoyed. Modern day dragons just like to type away at stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Contract finalized. I'm amazed you took my secret technique in stride like that. You must be a fearsome warrior who's overcome all sorts of harrowing ordeals. Very well. From here on, my legs are yours to command. As long as your path isn't unsavory, I'll take you wherever you wish to go. You horny bastard! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, Carrie Zool? <laughs> If this fey horse is the best she had to offer, maybe Aurora isn't as well liked as we thought. Mm. It's probably. Stop sneezing. <laughs> uh, it's probably just that she's. <laughs> How is that the wrong alert? No, I I just It's just uh, that's fucked up, man. <laughs> uh it's probably just that she's too popular. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, I trust there's nothing else left to say, yes? Then please, take us to Gloucester. Oh, and don't forget to drive safely. I can handle a few bumps, but Silver Shinobi, Artoria, and Da Vinci are all very tired. Ah, not to worry. I can assure you that I've never broken a speed limit in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, Lubu was the one who, uh, <laughs> who got hit with all the speeding tickets. And then he got incarcerated for, uh, you know... Homicide on defense of insanity. By the way, Oberon, what's with... Them... <laughs> By the way, Oberon, what's with that outfit? I kind of liked your old cloak. Oh, this? This is what I wear whenever I'm gathering information. The Queen soldiers don't always take too kindly to people asking questions about the state of Fairy Britain. So I try to avoid standing out by dressing in drab traveling clothes. I see. I'm impressed, Oberon. I'd never consider an outfit like that drab. No? Oh? I didn't know you were interested in fashion, Artoria. Does that mean you prefer outfits like Da Vinci's, then? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I mean, someone like me, dressing like her? That'd be laughable. Uh, true enough. You're definitely not ready yet. <clears throat> Oof. Okay, that's enough Artoria teasing for now. Silver Shinobi? Da Vinci? Never! <laughs> Would you mind telling me how much you learned about Fairy Britain while I was away? And that's about it. Hmm... The regularly occurring calamities, the moors, fairies who imitate human societies, 
the Salisbury Rebel Army, the Round Table Army of Londinium, and the Three Tom Lin. I'm impressed. If you already know that much, then I only have one thing left to tell you. What's that? That's that spaghetti is not for baby cats. <laughs> High Queen Morgan's objective. As you know now, she's been inscribing command spells onto fairies, levying magical energy from them as an existence tax, and ending the lives of any fairies who aren't able to pay up. Well, it turns out she hasn't been running such an oppressive regime for the last 2,000 years just to maintain her rule over Britain. Her real objective in this is to attack proper human history and transform it into a land of fairies. She wants to expand fairy Britain to encompass the whole planet, overwrite proper human history entirely, and turn the earth into one giant British isle. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. Oh, uh, great. So everybody gets to suffer the fate of becoming British. Don't tell Clegg I said that. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> it's why High Queen Morgan continues tormenting the fairies even to this day. As you can see, we need to defeat her for humanity and fairy kind alike. Hold on. Serious bit. Uh, let me just... I don't know if you could hear that. Yeah, I heard it. Alright, just gonna... Let's go and off like a fucking tea kettle. <laughs> just gonna turn the Discord volume down a bit. Ugh. Neil, present. Worship, submit. Bow your heads, leaders of the six clans. Bow your heads, 30 ambassadors, 100 officials. You are in the presence of High Queen Morgan, the ruler who expands our boundaries, upon whose shoulders all of Britain rests. Hear her words and obey. The same faces yet again, hmm? How terribly dull. I offer you neither absolution nor salvation. Remember always that all of Britain, down to the smallest pebble, is mine. Without my protection, the land of Fay would not see the next sunrise. Yes, your majesty. We are ever your humble servants. All of our time is yours. Our loyalty to you will never waver. Hmm. Very well. You jesters may stand against the wall. I will now allow each of the clan heads to speak. What have you to say? Thank you for your generosity, your majesty. Please, allow me the honor of going first. The council recognizes Lord Spriggan, head of the Earth Clan and Lord of Norwich. Thank you, secretary. According to our observations, Norwich's Calamity Pool should reach critical mass in approximately ten days' time. I'd like to take this time to say that if there are any lords present with property still in Norwich, please come speak to me after this meeting. I can assure you that even if the Moors engulfs all of Norwich, our bell tower will remain safe within an impenetrable fortress made with anti-Moors iron. If you wish to store your valuables there for safekeeping, I'm sure we can come to an arrangement. Sounds to me as though you don't care if your entire city disappears, as long as your money stays safe. <clears throat> the council recognizes Lord Woodwose, head of the Fang Clan and Lord of Oxford. My request remains the same as ever, your majesty. I urge you to take the opportunity to expand your army. The Moors continue to grow in number every year, and these round table army upstarts need to be dealt with. So I must ask that you increase your human shipments and assign more humans to the barracks. Oh, does this mean the Fang Clan alone is no longer up to the task? 
I suppose not even the fairy once known as the Sword of Britain, the great Lord Woodwose himself, can defeat a specter of advancing age. Silence, you infant! How dare you speak to me like that! If we weren't in Her Majesty's presence, I'd crush your head in my jaws for such insolence! Now, now, Woodwose, you should know better than that. Remember, every fairy in Britain looks up to you. The Lord of Oxford and owner of the restaurant most responsible for our food supply should conduct himself like a gentleman, right? Right. I know that, Aurora. I do. I'm not the raging frontline fighter I once was. I'm the calm, rational leader of my clan. What a joke. If this is to be no more than the usual sniping at each other, would you mind if I excused myself, Your Majesty? We're putting up a very rare item for auction today, and I have a lot of work to do getting things ready. The council recognizes Lady Murian, head of the Wing Clan and Lord of Gloucester. I already said my piece. Neither this Calamity Pool nor the anti Morris countermeasures have anything to do with Gloucester. So if all you twisted fairies want to do is argue with each other, by all means do so. Without me. Then again, Norwich has sent us good product lately, so I suppose we can offer our aid, if only a little. Do give my regards to Count Pepperon, Spriggan. Let him know that if he ever decides to move to Gloucester, he'll always have a place here. Lady Knocke Reib, head of the King Clan and ruler of Edinburgh. Absent. Lady Einzel, head of the Mirror Clan and guardian of the Lake District. Absent. At this time, and with High Queen Morgan's permission, the Council would like to welcome the Tanling from New Darlington. <laughs> Who the hell do you think you are? You think a damn secretary has the right to say my name? Come on, mother. When are you going to stop letting these stupid secretaries run these shows already? Can't you pick someone less hideous? What about a human with their limbs sewn to the wall? Or one who's been put to the guillotine? I swear, mother, you're way too soft on fairies and humans alike these days. Maybe you need more excitement? Huh? Why so quiet all of a sudden? Isn't it your job to kick up a fuss when something unusual happens? If you, if you can't even do that, you don't deserve to live. Would you all rather die to my string instead? Oh, if it isn't Tomlin Tristan. How good of you to grace us with your presence. You are the knight among knights who defends all Britain. And above all, you are the High Queen's beloved daughter. The only one in all of Britain who will carry on Her Majesty's Magecraft. There you go. That's it. I knew you could do it if you tried. But I still think it lacked a little something. I've got it. Patheticness. Which is why you three are going to show the others how it's done. <laughs> My feet! My ankles! They're gone! <laughs> Go on, jump! Let me see you hop around on those little stumps. Ah, right, you're not supposed to spill blood here. And you three are getting it everywhere. Ugh, so rude. You've gotten enough blood on the throne room floor. Just throw yourselves out the window into the pit now. Ah, uh, my body! I can't control my body! No, please stop, there's no coming back from the pit! Somebody, please, stop that girl before she... Ah! Swoosh. Nothing but pit. Well, Mother, what do you think? Makes the meeting so much more fun, right? What were you doing? That was Camelot's own minister of justice you just threw out the window. You bloodthirsty fiend. Know your place, Tristan. 
You think because the High Queen took in a low-class fairy like you as her own daughter, you could... Silence, Woodwows. This is a family matter. See? Her Majesty loves it. Time for you to learn your place. Sucks to be you, you overgrown cur. Why don't you just retire already? We're way stronger than you ever were. What did you say to me, girl? Stop, Woodwows. Don't let her drag you into her games. You're the head of the Fang Clan now. You can't let your temper ruin our reputation. Oh, great. Lady Gawain the hard-ass. A little more dullness to round out this boring meeting. You're lucky she showed up when she did, old-timer. Just wait. I'll take your feet next time. Give us your report, Gawain. What transpired at the ranch in the south? Yes, High Queen. Some rebels calling themselves the Round Table Army managed to take control of the ranch. The guards you entrusted with staffs were captured, and all of the humans attempted an escape. Upon learning of this, I took it upon myself to go and contain the situation without waiting for your orders. While I succeeded at wiping out the rebels, I'm afraid I also destroyed the facility and allowed three interlopers to escape. I'm also having the escaped humans transported here for re-education as we speak. High Queen, I am prepared to accept whatever punishment you deem fit for me. What is your ruling, High Queen? It is all right. In light of your accomplishments at Sheffield, I will overlook your failure today. Lift your head, Gawain. I plan to demolish that ranch in any case. While you did take it a bit too far, you have ultimately saved me the time of mobilizing the Earth Clan. Now, is there anything else you have to tell me? Yes, Your Majesty. One of the interlopers was a human you've told us about before. It was the master from proper human history. The master of proper human history? Then Beryl Gooch was right! There's more. One of the fairies accompanying the human appeared to be from Fairy Britain. From what I could tell, she seemed to be about 16 in human years, and she used the same kind of magecraft as you. She what? What are you saying, Gawain? You don't think that fairy is the child of prophecy, do you? The child of prophecy is no more than one of Einzel's delusions. High Queen Morgan is Britain's one and only ruler. How could you believe such nonsense like a common peasant? You are a servant of the High Queen. You should be ashamed. Oh, quit yapping, you goddamn mutt. Now, now, Lady Tristan. You can't blame Lord Woodwells for being upset. The Child of Prophecy is also connected to the Tintagel incident, after all. You know, the coastal village that was harboring her. Well, Lord Woodwells there is the one who raised that village to the ground though it seems the child herself escaped him. Apparently, there was a girl of about 16 with long golden hair who managed to break through the blockade of Fang Clan fairies surrounding the village. The soldiers who witnessed it said she fought like a raging storm. They also called her the girl who uses magecraft, the Queen's second coming, and High Queen Morgan's daughter. <laughs> Don't you dodge my spell, Capless. That was meant to kill you. I'm mother's only daughter. Got it? I couldn't care less about this child of prophecy, but you'd better not spread rumors like that any further. These aren't my opinions, Lady Tristan. The Fang Clan are the ones spreading these rumors. Still, think about it, fine upper-class fairies of Camelot. The Moors continue to increase in number. A calamity is about to befall Norwich. There's Knocknarive in the north, Londinium in the south, and the recent rebellion in Sheffield. And now, we have the invader from an outside world that Lord Beryl Gut warned us about. I don't believe Einzel's prophecy any more than you do, but you can't deny that the pieces are all falling into place. The child of prophecy is real. Or at least, the common fairies who know nothing of politics believe she is. Which is enough. This is no time for our clans to be fighting amongst ourselves. We must put our people's minds at ease. So I suggest we work together to do something about it, starting with the Calamity Pool at Norwich. What say you? 
You do have a point. Whether the child of prophecy is real or not, we must do something about Norwich's calamity pool. High Queen Morgan, would you be willing to send your army to Norwich to quell this disaster? I believe Lord Bogart, ruler of Sheffield, made a similar request. I understand how you feel, Aurora, but we can't send out Camelot's soldiers. While I'm certain Her Majesty's troops would make short work of the Calamity, sending them out would also leave Camelot vulnerable. Knock is constantly on the lookout for any weakness she can exploit. We can't leave this castle unguarded. I agree. The way things are going now, it's going to be the War of Spring and the War of Summer all over again. Only this war will be fought between Her Majesty and Knock the self-proclaimed queen. We do have the upper hand over her forces, but only just. The wars of spring and summer. You speak of the fair a war between the north and south fairies, yes? Indeed, the northern fairies have been claiming dominion over Britain for thousands of years. I thought they had settled down and agreed to submit to High Queen Morgan's rule, but it seems they're still up to their old tricks. Uh, how deplorable. Why can't they simply pledge their loyalty to our High Queen like we have done? Given the circumstances, I suppose this truly isn't the time to worry about Norwich. Though it pains me to say this as their lord, I'm afraid I have no choice but to let my residents die, and worry not. I will use the water mirror on Norwich. It will destroy the Calamity along with most of Norwich, but the bell, po but the bell tower will remain intact. So long as the castle remains, it will fall to you to rebuild, Spriggan. It is time for you to demonstrate once again the skills that enabled you to take Norwich from its previous lord. If that is your will, High Queen. Now, how much can I expect in the way of financial aid? I will give you one third of the flotsam wasting away in the West Treasury. It is foreign detritus that has drifted here from proper human history. But you could ask for no greater reward, could you? Oh, that sounds wonderful, Your Majesty. Thank you, thank you. But what about the residents of Norwich? None will survive this. Isn't there anything you can do to make them ec evacuate, Spriggan? Oh, I've been urging them to evacuate for some time now, but they all refuse to leave. They're either too attached to the land, or they love their jobs, or they don't think the threat is real, or they think the Child of Prophecy will save them, or some combination thereof. As great as my clan can be, I'll be the first to admit they can also be a bunch of hard-headed fools. Having said that, where would you propose they go? Salisbury, the Wind Clan city? You know just as well as I do how poorly the Earth and Wind Clans get along. It's a problem not even the High Queen herself has been able to solve. It's rare that things like this wrap up in a nice little bow. So no, I'm afraid Norwich is a lost cause. Why don't they come down to my place? We'd be happy to take in any poor refugees looking for a new home. That's just the kind of place New Darlington is. Ain't that right, Lady Spinal? Right you are, Red Barrel. I didn't know you were listening in on this boring old meeting. Now, now, my fair lady, don't be like that. There's nothing boring about it. These clans have agreed to put aside their many differences and focus on what's best for Britain's future, you know? You won't find a more entertaining show anywhere in the country. Not that you'll find any other show in this country either, but still! I've changed my mind. Lady Aurora, let's arrange a time to discuss the particulars of evacuating Norwich's residents to Salisbury, once this meeting is concluded. Whatever our difference is, I'll gladly take that over subjecting my fellow fairies to the National Slaughterhouse Theater. These problems concern fairy Britain, and we fairies should be the ones to resolve them. Hmm. Oxford will be glad to take in refugees as well. While I can't stand how many rules the Earth Clan smithing breaks, that doesn't mean I'm about to send them to a needless bloody death. Gloucester's neutral stance remains the same as always. Our doors are always open, both to refugees and to fairies who are tired of being beholden to their clan's customs. Uh What, now you guys are all buddy-buddy? I guess you must really hate me, huh? Man, 
That makes me real sad. You'd think High Queen Morgan's first ever boyfriend and future King of Britain would get a little more respect. Yeah, Beryl. Hurry up and marry Mother already. The most powerful fairy in all of Britain marrying a human? Freaking hilarious! And then you'll marry me next, right? Isn't that what humans do? Marry as many people as you like? <laughs> of course, Lady Spino, but let's not rush things. No matter how much you may care for someone, the moment they belong to someone else, a lot of the shine tends to come off. There's no guarantee the same won't happen to you. Once you see me as Her Majesty's husband, you might wonder what you ever saw in me at all. So we don't want to make any hasty decisions when it comes to marriage, and who knows? Maybe the partner of your dreams is even closer than you think. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. There's no one else for me but you. Very well. <laughs> Let's see. Very well. I understand your concerns. My course of action remains unchanged for my public declaration. At the end of year 2019 of the era of the High Queen, Fairy Britain, the land of the Fae, shall rule this very planet. The walls of light that surround the British Isle will disappear and our world shall overwrite the wicked world that lurks outside. Once it does, you shall all be free of the calamities, and a new age shall reign. I shall build a new land of fairies, and your clans shall die to serve as its foundation. Yes, High Queen, your will is our command. Hm. Then here is my decision. Nothing need be done about the Calamity Pool in Norwich so you will not advise its residents to evacuate. Regarding the Child of Prophecy, I will consider the threat she may pose to my rule. Furthermore, once the invaders from proper human history Beryl Gutz spoke about are found, they are to be captured and brought here, alive. There is something I will have them tell me. If the Master Gawain Saw is also accompanied by the Child of Prophecy, so much the better. Woodwose, Spriggan, Murian, and Aurora. You are all to assemble a team and begin your search at once. I want to see these rebels and invaders brought before my throne. Whichever clan brings them to me shall be rewarded with 500 acres of land. This meeting is now concluded. Clan heads, you are dismissed. Tomlin, here is your next mission. As before, you need not search for the Child of Prophecy. I don't get it, Mother. What good are any of those stupid clan heads going to be? I could find the child way faster than anyone, right? All Lancelot has going for her is speed. I can use the Infinity Mirror you gave me to go I anywhere. Find, I'm, I can, I'm sorry, that's just hilarious. I can find them faster than anyone. I mean, all Lancelot has going for her is speed. If you would, if you would, listen, she says, I can use the infinity mirror you gave me to go anywhere at a moment's notice. I was, I was literally just saying that when you, ch when you chimed in. <laughs> it is in my nature to chime in when I should not. I couldn't quite understand you there, Carrie. Anyway. Yes. There is no need. Leave the child of prophecy be. I will send word of my edict later. The rest is in your hands, Tomlin Gawain. You heard Her Majesty, Tristan. Can you not behave yourself even for a moment? You do know the reason she was so strict with you is because the clan heads were here, yes? She may be our all-powerful High Queen, but she still needs to keep up appearances. She can't treat you like her daughter at a council meeting. And then there's your attitude toward Beryl. 
How do you think it looks for the queen's daughter to be so intimate with a human man? And the high queen's own lover at that. Have you ever considered the kind of pressure she faces? The kind of things people say about you? Your own morals as a knight? Ugh, just shut up, you big dumb bitch. Who the hell do you think you are lecturing me? I don't know how you even have time to worry about my rep, seeing how you're always on the lookout for your next literal romantic snack. How many lovers have you had this year, anyway? For such a big gal, you sure are good at bed hopping, aren't you? Ooh, maybe you could give me some pointers about romance sometime. Yeah, I guess since you literally Ooh. dig into your lovers right after you got them in bed, it's probably more a matter of filling your stomach than your heart, huh? What did you say? God damn. Just kidding. Come on, don't glare at me like that. I understand, really. I'm totally aware that your romances are always sincere. I mean, you're so awkward, you couldn't two-time someone if you tried, right? You know what they call you, right? Oh. Gawain of many loves, Gawain the big eater. Gosh, you poor thing, nobody understands you, do they? They have no idea that you only jump into bed with those you really genuinely love. This bitch! What a mouthy little thing! I can't believe someone could be that mouthy. I'm going back to the castle. You should stay on standby until further notice. Yeah, when they said Tumlin Tristan was cruel, they were not kidding. Ugh, that meeting sucked so hard. I didn't get to spend any time with Mother. Again. And Woodwo's stench was the worst. There's nothing more foul than old game mixed with bad cologne. I mean, he is a dog. Spriggan's fake-ass smile made me want to puke. Mirian's goody goody act was so transparent. And Aurora's the worst of all. Ugh. Wish I had a good excuse to rip her to pieces. And I hope she slips up soon. If she'd just act against Mother, I could wipe her and her stupid Salisbury out all at once. Hey, are you even listening to me, Beryl? Huh? He's not here? He was right by the mirror a moment ago. Oh, I see. He must be down at the theater. They're doing a show with those humans we captured over there today. So they make the humans fight each other and the last one standing gets to live. What do you call it again? Gladiatorial games? I used to think it was a pain in the ass, but it's actually pretty fun. Especially the very last part, when you tell them the champion gets to go free and stuff. <laughs> Idiots. As if that would ever happen. Uh, humans really can be so entertaining. Then again, I guess this really isn't the time to be laughing. I know what Mother said, but I can't just let this go. Who does this child of prophecy think she is, anyway? Everyone knows I'm the only one who uses Magecraft besides Mother. She's only got one daughter, and it's me. No way I can let trash like that live. Ugh, this is pissing me off! Okay, I know what to do. Times like this, there's nothing better than shopping. Let's see what the newspaper has today. The Knocker Company is getting out of Gloucester. New brands are coming soon. Huh, so Spriggan's shop is going out of business. Oh, well, that's too bad. Spriggan sucks, but his shop at least had good shit. Huh? Hang on. Does this mean it's going to be replaced by... I knew it. It's going to be a count shop. I'll say this for Miriam. She always knows what's hot. Looks like I'll be going shopping in Gloucester again, then. Plus, she also mentioned she was getting things ready for a special auction. Fine by me. I'll make it an auction nobody will ever forget. I get a feeling by that she means it's going to be very bloody. Yep. Uh, 
weakened. Uh oh. Is this going to be a situation like uh, the Salem singularity where everybody's going to be powered down? Uh, Do we have enough time for this? Uh, just one more arrow, I guess. <coughs> okay. And we're up against writers. So Lancers is what we want, right? Uh, no. Assassins. Right. Lancers are... This. Lancers are good against, uh, archers. Look, Silver Shinobi, you can see the city off in the distance now. Might have taken us a whole day, but we're almost to Gloucester. <laughs> yep, and now that we're here, we shouldn't have to worry about the Queen's soldiers coming after us for a while. Gloucester belongs to Murian, the head of the Wing Clan. And fighting is against the law here. She doesn't pick fights with any of the other clans, and she's not completely under Morgan's thumb either. As far as Mirian is concerned, this is an autonomous region that just happens to have diplomatic relations with Fairy Britain. That's how she tells it, anyway. Is that why Morgan's army won't attack here? Even Morgan only has limited power in Gloucester. As for why that is, well... You can tell something's different here, right, Da Vinci? Say, with the mana density? I'm glad you brought that up. I was just going to ask about that. There's nothing wrong with my gadgets, but the ones powered by magical energy are refusing to work. Is that because of this area's unique mystic traits? Because the rules of this world itself are different here? Exactly. As to why, well, that gets into the nature of fairies themselves. And not just here in Fairy Britain, this applies to proper human history as well. Like how there are several different kinds of fairies. Some are former gods, fallen from grace. Others are accumulations of human and animal animosity, bits and pieces of their souls. They're essentially thoughts and feelings with nowhere else to go, wrapped up in a shell made from human rumors. These sorts of fairies only exist because human society exists, and strictly speaking, they're not pure fairies. Pure fairies are those that form within the planet or the planet's inner sea and whose existence is in no way contingent on human civilization. In the Magecraft world, fairies born within this planet's inner sea are known as Great Fathers and Great Mothers. You can think of them as divided spirits of Earth's soul. Yes, that's close enough. In scope, they're comparable to personified nature gods, but unlike gods, they don't impose any rules on humans. Great fathers and mothers are pure supernatural beings. In this Lost Belt, fairies of that rank who appear on Earth's surface, either through some sort of mistake or on a mission from the planet itself, are known as a ray. In proper human history, the fairy who lent King Arthur his sacred sword was a great mother. And I'm guessing proper human history's Morgan also inherited that great mother's authority. Though, of course, Morgan's father was also King Uther, the ancient king of Britain, so I suppose that would make her a uh, human-fairy hybrid. King Arthur, on the other hand, is a human-dragon hybrid. They may seem similar on the surface, but deep down they couldn't be any more different. Oh? A man. How so? The fact that one ultimately decided to defend humanity, and the other, mystics. King Arthur chose a Britain where humans could thrive, and Morgan chose a Britain where mystics could thrive. As for which one chose correctly, well, your own proper human history bears that out. If mystics had continued to rule Britain, it would have resulted in it being excised from all of human history. But I digress. Getting back on track. a -ray are equivalent to a great mother, but possess a will of their own. They have a unique ability to remake the world around them according to their inner truth, or rather, their essence. This phenomenon is called a fey domain. It's a grand mystic that only very powerful fairies possess. And a ray generate descendants, or terminals if you prefer, simply by existing. These descendants are called forest children and stone children, and they're a majority of fairies in fairy Britain. 
These descendants may have only a tiny fraction of the A race power, but that doesn't change the fact that they're descendants. And some of these descendants have more A ray blood in them than others. Murian, the head of the Wing Clan and the Lord of Gloucester, is one of them. All that is to say, Gloucester has a Fey domain that can be quite a pain in the neck. A domain that takes Murian's temperament and mischievous nature and turns it into law that denies strength itself. A law that denies strength itself? So the weak become strong and vice versa? It did behave like that for a time, but now it's a little different. These days nobody's allowed to bring strength achieved through training into Gloucester. All who enter, even Morgan herself, are left with no more than the strength they were born with. Ugh, so it's a city where everyone goes back to being level one. But... Yep. The ones most adamant about making rules are also always the ones with a way around them. So it's probably safe to assume that Murian's the only one in the city who doesn't have to play by her rules. And if that's true, it also means her word is law there, so keep that in mind. Sounds like this A-Ray term is unique to this Lost Belt. Just like real life, yep. But we ain't touching that one. You know, yeah, this ain't the place for that, sadly. <laughs> In our world, they'd probably be close to elementals or true ancestors. <coughs> so, are there any other fairies that have inherited these trait A ray powers? Maybe the other clan heads? Like, does Aurora have a fey domain too? No, she doesn't. Most fairies with that kind of power end up being excluded from their clans. Sometimes they're outright ostracized, other times they're unable to control their own laws and end up falling apart. Yep. Of the six clan heads, the only ones who can impose their fey domain on others are Mirion and Nocturne. Most of the other domain holders fall apart and become ghosts wandering the countryside. They're called night calls, depending on how you look at them. They could be even scarier than the Tomlin. Okay, everyone, we're almost to Gloucester. I know this is a surprise, but I'm actually a member of the Fang Clan, so I'd rather not go inside if I can help it. I'll be camping out here while you do your business, so just call for me when you're ready to leave. And just so there's no misunderstanding, let me be perfectly clear. Despite how I look, I'm not a Wind Fairy. I'm a Fang Fairy. I'm sure you must be shocked, but it's true. Whatever you say, buddy. Okay. Let's split up. I'll go with Da Vinci, Silver Shinobi will go with Artoria. The auction will be held at night, so kill the time however you like. Oh! Anything goes in Gloucester, so you'll find a lot of fairies living it up here. You still have that money you earned in Salisbury, right? Well, you can use it here too, so don't be afraid to cut loose. Don't worry, just think of it as a date, and it'll be nighttime in no time. So, how about you, Da Vinci? Is there anywhere you'd like to go? We could go to a cafe, but personally I'd recommend the Warped Observatory. So dizzying, it'll make you want to throw up. Oh, Fart, he's already headed there. Why do you even ask me in the first place? <laughs> he did indeed vanish in a puff. Anyway... I know this is short notice, guys, but are you all right with this? You are? Okay, I'll play along then. Wait up, Oberon! Aren't there any museums around here? With so many fairies in this Lost Belt, there has to be at least one painter. <laughs> I need to find an atelier! Well, for the time being, shall we get going? For the time being? I need... I need to find an atelier! For what? <laughs> oh, uh... <Toilet. laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. This is all happening so suddenly that I'm, uh, still catching up. <laughs> well, we've already come this far. No sense holding back now, I guess. 
Now that we're in Gloucester, we may as well enjoy it. Come on, I'll show you around. Ooh, this looks nice. Whoa, so this is Gloucester. It's very strange, isn't it? I felt the same way the first time I came here too. Far away things look big, close things look tiny. Sometimes there's pink rain, sometimes the main street is covered in rainbows. Sometimes boys become girls and girls become boys. Basically, it's a whirlwind of constant change. The last time I came here, I, I, I got zero out of ten in a princess pageant. A girl wearing a scarf made out of insect thread. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Gary. Terry just played the Mario death sound. <laughs> a girl wearing a scarf made out of insect thread made me take off all my clothes and... Stop, please! TMI! Really? But I was just getting started. Oh? I haven't seen you two around before. Are you here for tonight's auction? Huh. I never would have thought to have my humans stand out more than me. You know, possessions that make people envious are all the rage in Gloucester right now. Is that why you made yourself look so plain? So you could dress up your human instead? It's brilliant! I'll have to try it myself! I think I'm starting to see what the deal is. Speaking of the auction, could you tell us more about it? You mean about the merchandise being put up? The fairy with the iron weapon? Well, apparently they're a bad fairy from another world who rebelled against the High Queen. I'd love to attend the auction too, especially since there should be no problem keeping a criminal as a slave. But since you need an invitation for this one... <laughs> but since you need an invitation for this one, I decided to give up and just enjoy a night on the town. I'm sorry. I know I should have been the one to ask, but I just kind of froze. Uh, that's okay. I'm just getting these perfectly, aren't I? Somehow, yes! <laughs> that's okay. Now, what do we do about the invitation? Well, we won't be able to get one on our own. They're only sent out to upper-class fairies. I don't like it, but it looks like our only option is sneaking into the auction hall. But don't worry, there's no one better at stealth magecraft than me. Just you wait. This time I'm going to show you what I can really do. What's this deja vu I'm feeling? Help! Is anybody there? My pet mice just escaped from their cage! I promise I'll make it worth your while if you can catch them. Just please help me! Huh? Looks like there's a bunch of tiny creatures running toward us. What do you think we should do, Silver Shinobi? This is straight out of Straw Millionaire. <laughs> Let's catch them. Oh, right. He's still getting his bearings here, isn't he? Oh well, nothing to be done now. Sorry, just thinking out loud. Okay, let's get this battle started. I'm pretty sure you're going to regret this, but at least it'll be a good lesson. Huh? Alright, so... Uh, I'm going to want assassins. In this quest's battle, all servants' levels are forced to go down to level 1 due to the effects of Murian's knowledge of the outer world. Huh. At least we still have uh, the buffs from the foe, I think, right? Alright. Uh... I'm my ass beat. Oh my god. What are you doing? 
doing these doing the gym battle stuff. Jake is kicking my fucking ass. Ah. Uh, that. Those are not mice. Well, uh, let me see. Oh shit! <laughs> Those are not mice. Well, my brethren, freedom! let's see. Uh, good news. I believe everybody here is equipped to deal with this. Uh. Is it just me, or do these dragons have boobs? Fuck, I can't unsee that now. Like, that's supposed... That, that's, that's supposed to be, like, the front of their shoulder and everything like that, but now I... Because I have played Pokemon, and I have seen Needle Queen, I can't unsee... Yeah, I can't unsee that now, damn it. Alright, uh, demonic nature of the Oni. Uh. Yeah, okay. Jake's Gengar because it just keeps inflicting statuses! <laughs> I must sleep and disoriented. And he has a way to paralyze me too. <laughs> Dynamic Draconic Debegaloos. <laughs> Humongous Hanamongalongalongongus! Oh, jeez, there's another one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Thanks, game. We really need a zoom in of that. I mean, titty. Remy likes the dragon titties. <laughs> I just like titties in general. I know, Mister. I like big tits. <laughs> Why do you think I watch Proton John Street? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you know, you know. Let's. Uh, Fletchenda, you were a utter failure. Eve. You did well against so Dave. You. Dave. You just did nothing to Jake. Uh, maybe a little later I can uh, do my turn at the. This is the flying gym, right? So I could. Yeah, I would. I would need to do the ice gym first. Plus, we have to like uh, update your Pokemon. Well, that too. It's time for targeting. I'm just letting you know all the Pokemon in this gym. Togetic, you're up against the Gengar. Goodbye, Togetic. You served well. All right, and Shuten Doji, you should be able to finish them off. Good. 
by the power of Aoi Yuki. Facing Athena in the flying gym. Yep. Our old friend Athena. <laughs> Never mind, they're still alive. Or at least one is. I thought that would do more damage. Give me the Omni Boost! Give me the Omni Boost! I didn't get the Omni Boost! No! Only for the Omni Boost, it's only taking failed! No, don't go out there. Oh, you're going for the confusion again. And there we go. I succeeded, thank God. I, I'm not playing as Arthur right now, god damn it. Alright. So we wrangled up some dragons, or I mean mice. Rawr. Squeak. <laughs> just this giant dragon and it just goes squeak squeak and to boot it just has Mickey Mouse ears on top like it's just the headband those it's were okay, he, has, he has a pair he has a pair at home <laughs> right Rami I mean I wasn't denying it. <laughs> like holding up a chef's knife to your throat. <laughs> Those were mice. <laughs> big things seem small and small things seem big. That that's just what happens in Gloucester sometimes. <sighs> now do you understand? I Thanks. Regardless. <laughs> God damn that hurts. Thanks, weirdos with too much time on your hands. Here you go, a generous coupon. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go make a bundle with my mice here. <laughs> Later! A coupon, huh? Let's see. I keep hitting him. Gengo ain't going to last much longer at this rate. <laughs> big things seem small and small things seem big. Then I seem to have double Ds. Shit! God, I wish I did. <laughs> a coupon, huh? Let's see. Knocker Company, surprise and security. Oh, wow, yeah, it's... they got some knockers, all right. Oh, wow, it's for S&C. Do you know it? Spriggan and Capless, I mean? It's Fairy Britain's very first department store. Grandpa told me about it. This is great. And look, according to the map, it's not far from here. Come on, Silver Shinobi, let's go check it out. Yeah, we're ending it after this. Yeah, we are ending it out after this. Uh, looks like it's already gone out of business. They're already building another store in its place, too. Looks like it's just called Count. Never heard of that one before. But I can see they've got shoes, bags, hats, dresses... Oh wow! Everything on display looks amazing. Oh, they're trim and shiny and elegant all at once. I bet they'd be so much fun to wear. Oh, I want them. But then again, they'd probably be wasted on me. The designs do lean a little feminine, but I'm guessing they're probably gender neutral. And wow, what are those strange clothes? Uh, I'm not gonna answer. I'm not gonna answer that, Carrie. <laughs> oh, hold on. And wow, what are those strange clothes? The sign says... Kimono? I've never heard of them, but I think it'd look good on you, Silver Shinobi. Huh, not bad. 
You got a pretty decent eye. Why does Gengar have to hit so hard? Uh oh, here we go. But would you mind keeping it down a bit? I'm trying to stay incognito, so I don't want to attract too much attention. Uh oh, I'm sorry. I'm from a very small town, so. Hmm. I see. So, what? You wanted to see the big city before a calamity shows up and kills you or something? You're lucky you're not one of those geeky Gloucester fairies. You're also lucky your ankles aren't to my taste. Be grateful your boots are so frumpy. They are? I guess they are, huh? This is a fairy. Still, they're very practical. An odd goggy could go town on them and I wouldn't feel anything. <laughs> you actually have to worry about goggy bites? You must come from a real hick town. I mean, you've got the looks of a pretty upper class wind fairy, but you're stuck doing your own farming? Man, it must be rough out in the sticks with so few human slaves to do the heavy lift. Ting. This is weird. Really weird. Don't you think this conversation is weird? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh crap, she obviously suspects something. N no, I, uh, I don't think so. It's just neither Silver Shinobi nor I used to dealing with city fairies, so... Not used to them, huh? I see, so that's why you're not scared of me. Feels like there's more to it than that, though. That's strange. How come I'm not pissed off? I usually hate every fairy I meet. Oh, well, I guess that's just how some days go. Plus, there's the auction coming up. Oh, are you interested in the auction? Do you actually have an invitation? Oh, uh, well, we actually came here for the auction, but we didn't know we needed an invitation to get in. I see. An invitation, huh? <laughs> you know, I do have an extra one, but I'd sooner feed it to a goat than give it to you. That's it. Finally an expression that suits you. It's about time you learned your place, you uppity hick. Trust me, a girl like you is at least a hundred years too young for the auction house. Come back when you're at least a little more grown up. Oh, wait, that's right. Low-class fairies... Low-class fairies like you don't even live for a hundred years, do you? I guess you'll just have to make the most of your life in the dirt with the goggies while it lasts, then. Such a mouthy bitch. God damn. She was, uh, quite... Seeing her taken down. She was, uh, quite the fairy, wasn't she? Yes, she was. I wonder if I said something... I wonder if I said something that offended her. Ugh, there we go. Cutscene's done. Who hex fucking her? <sighs> oh, fucking hurts. All right, let's see. Uh, and not, uh, Jason, I almost done with this battle. I'm not using life, dude, because I'm not a cheap bitch. Uh, but that hex really fucking hurts. All right, uh, let's see. Who are we going to raid? Uh,. Okay, I see who we're going to raid. What? The ad crashed the stream for Carrie. Oh no! Why do I keep getting slugged by this Gengar? That was 22 damage. Oh no! What? Um. Uh... We had an ad moment, and apparently it crashed the stream for Carrie Zool, and it just... <laughs> it took his internet out, too. Oh my god! The ad has slain Carrie! Alright, um... That's 
I'm, I, I, select, I selected <laughs> the wrong move. I selected the wrong move. I selected Feywind again. It only does half. I'm an idiot. Why I, am I an idiot? I see Carrie's will say that, and my first thought is uh, it's said in the l style of that one line. It, it's said in the style of that one line from Kung Pao. I will find the balls of the ad and kick it. All right. Uh, I should have been rolling against Curse Body every time I hit Gengar. Whoops. Brain cell. All right. Gonna raid with fees. And let's see. Uh, gonna go ahead and let's raid, uh, Fino Tyson. Fino Tyson. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that right. Fino Pants! <laughs> Fees! Fino Pants! You're not doing it crazy enough, cracker! You can't do it like this! Yeah, to be fair, I, I never was that much of a Nickelodeon kid back then. I grew up more on Cartoon <laughs> I grew up more on uh, Cartoon Network and uh, Kids WB. <laughs> Alright, <sighs> gonna go ahead and raid Fino Tyson. Uh... I will see you guys tomorrow night about the same time. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and raid. I will see you guys later.